For decades, we've been searching for alien life by listening for faint whispers in the cosmic dark, hoping to catch a stray signal. We were wrong. NASA's revolutionary James Webb Space Telescope didn't just hear a whisper, it stared right into the eye of the storm and took a picture. Stephen Hawking would be back at the blackboard for what scientists found hiding behind a baby star, 110 light years from Earth. We looked, and something alien looked right back. The impossible photograph. It all started with a machine unlike any other in human history. The James Webb Space Telescope, a gold-plated behemoth drifting silently a million miles from Earth, is not just a telescope, it's a time machine. Its gargantuan, honeycomb-like mirror, spanning over 21 feet, is designed to capture the faintest, oldest light in the universe light that has been traveling for billions of years. But Webb wasn't just built to look at the edge of time, it was also designed to do something that was once considered science fiction. Take a direct photograph of a planet orbiting another star. Let's be clear about how impossible this task is. Trying to see an exoplanet next to its star is like trying to spot a firefly hovering next to a military-grade searchlight from miles away. The star's glare is millions, sometimes billions, of times brighter than the light reflected by its planet. It's a celestial needle in a cosmic haystack made of pure light. For years, astronomers had to rely on indirect tricks to find new worlds. They would watch a star for years, waiting for a telltale, minuscule dip in its brightness a sign that a planet had passed in front of it. This is the transit method, and it has found us thousands of planets. But it's like trying to understand a house by only ever seeing the shadow of its owner passing by a window. You know someone is there, but you have no idea what they look like. The James Webb Telescope changes the game completely. It carries a secret weapon, an ingenious piece of French-produced technology called a coronagraph. Housed within its mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, the coronagraph is, in essence, a tiny, perfectly engineered black dot. Its sole purpose is to act like a thumb held up to the sky to block out the sun. By positioning this device with breathtaking precision to cover the blazing light of a distant star, Webb can suddenly see the incredibly faint objects orbiting around it. It wipes away the glare and reveals the secrets hidden in the shadows. And, on the 25th of June, 2025, it worked. For the first time, Webb used this cosmic blindfold to discover a planet that no one knew existed. Staring at a young, small star named TWA7 in the constellation Antlia, the telescope blocked its light and saw it, a faint but unmistakable point of light, a new world. This wasn't a shadow or a wobble, it was a photograph, a direct image of a new planet. The team, led by astronomer Anne-Marie Lagrange, had made history. They had opened a new window into the universe. The truth nobody expected is that the era of indirectly hunting for planets is over. A ghost in the nursery. Just taking the picture would have been a monumental achievement. But it's what the picture showed that sent shockwaves through the world of astronomy. This new planet wasn't just some random ball of gas in the middle of nowhere. It was a ghost, a ghost from the past, living in a cosmic nursery. This changes everything. The star system, TWA7, is a baby, only about six million years old. To put that in perspective, our own sun and solar system are 4.5 billion years old. Finding a planet here is like using a time machine to travel back to the very first moments of our own solar system's creation. We are not just looking at a planet, we are looking at a planet being born. And that's not even the weirdest part. The planet itself is a conundrum. It's a gas giant, roughly the same mass as our own Saturn. While it's huge compared to Earth, the stunning revelation is that it is the least massive exoplanet ever to be directly imaged. Previous telescopes could only manage to photograph massive, bloated giants, many times the size of Jupiter. Webb's sensitivity has pushed the boundary into a whole new category. Finding this planet was like listening for a symphony, and instead hearing a single, perfect pin drop from across the auditorium. It speaks to the almost unbelievable power of Webb's instruments. But here's the crazy part its location. 
the planet is orbiting its star at a mind-boggling distance about 52 times farther than the Earth orbits the Sun. Our solar system's most distant planet, Neptune, is only about 30 times the Earth-Sun distance. This is where the panic starts to set in for planetary scientists. According to our best theories of how planets form, a planet like this shouldn't be here. The dominant theory, known as core accretion, suggests planets are built from the ground up, closer to a star, rocky and icy particles in a swirling disk of materiala protoplanetary disk clumped together, growing larger and larger until they form a core massive enough to attract a huge atmosphere of gas. It's like a snowball rolling downhill, but this process is thought to be too slow and inefficient to work so far away from the star, where the building materials are too sparse. Seeing this Saturn-sized planet so far out in the cold, desolate plains of its solar system is a direct challenge to that model. It's like finding a perfectly built skyscraper in the middle of the Antarctic. How did it get there? Was it formed in place by some other, more mysterious process? Perhaps through a wild and chaotic mechanism called gravitational instability, where a massive disk of gas rapidly collapses under its own weight to form a giant planet all at once? Or was it born closer to its star, in the correct zone, and then violently kicked out to the hinterlands by a gravitational tug-of-war with another unseen planet? We don't know, and that's the terrifying and exhilarating truth. This one photograph has thrown a giant wrench into the neat and tidy models of planetary formation. Even more astonishing, because of the perfect top-down angle from which we are viewing this system, Webb could see the entire crime scene. It imaged the leftover protoplanetary disk itself, revealing two massive, concentric rings of dust and rock. And there, sitting right inside one of the narrow gaps in this cosmic vinyl record, was the planet. We are seeing, in real time, a planetary system being carved out by its young inhabitants. We have found a fossil that is still alive. The New Cosmic Playbook this discovery isn't just about one planet. It's about a fundamental shift in our entire strategy for exploring the cosmos and searching for life. For decades, we have been limited by our methods. The transit method, for all its success, is inherently biased. It's best at finding huge planets that orbit extremely close to their stars, because those are the ones that block the most light and pass in front of their star most often. As a result, our catalog of known exoplanets is skewed, filled with bizarre, hot Jupiters and other oddballs that have no parallel in our own solar system. We were looking at the universe through a keyhole and thinking we saw the whole room. Lagrange herself said it best, Webb opens a new window. Direct imaging, the technique pioneered by this discovery, is the exact opposite. It's best for finding planets far away from their stars, where the star's glare is easier to manage. What nobody talks about is that this means we are about to discover a whole new class of worlds we never knew existed. Worlds on the distant fringes of their systems. Worlds with orbits that take thousands of years. Worlds that were previously completely invisible to us. This is where the story pivots from pure science to the future of human exploration. A discovery like this doesn't just earn a few headlines. It becomes the foundational argument for the next generation of space technology. It lights a fire under engineers and visionaries. While this planet is a gas giant and not a candidate for life, it is a crucial proof of concept. It proves the method works. It's the first step on a long road toward the ultimate prize, directly imaging an Earth-like planet. Even the mighty web cannot yet do that. An Earth-sized planet is far too small and dim to be photographed directly, even with a coronagraph. As Lagrange noted, I do hope the projects of direct imaging of Earth-like planets and searches for possible signs of life will become a reality. That hope is now a tangible goal. This discovery will fuel the proposals for even more powerful telescopes, for new missions designed specifically for that purpose. It brings to mind NASA's upcoming Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, scheduled to launch by 2027. Like Webb, it will be a powerhouse for infrared astronomy but with a field of view 100 times wider. Roman is designed to conduct massive surveys, and as we learned from the article on black holes, 
it will be able to spot incredibly bright transient events from across the universe. While its primary mission is to study dark energy and hunt for exoplanets using a different technique called microlensing, the technologies being developed for it and the data it gathers will be invaluable. Discoveries like TWA-7b provide the blueprint. They tell us what to look for and how to build the machines that can find it. We are building a new cosmic playbook. Step one was finding shadows with Kepler. Step two is taking baby pictures with Webb. Step three will be taking high definition portraits of Earth's twin with the telescopes of tomorrow. This discovery is the starting pistol for that race. And if that wasn't enough, it gets even deeper. The discovery of TWA-7b doesn't just fill a gap in our knowledge, it creates a hundred new ones. It opens a Pandora's box of questions that may take decades to answer, pushing the boundaries of what we think we know. The most pressing question remains, how did this planet form? The two competing theories are now at war, with TWA-7b as the battlefield. Was it core accretion, the slow, patient buildup of material? Or was it gravitational instability, a sudden, violent collapse? If it was the latter, it means that planetary systems might be far more chaotic and unpredictable places than we imagined. It suggests that giant planets can just pop into existence in the blink of a cosmic eye, completely reshaping their nascent solar systems. Then there's the question of its evolution. At only 6 million years old, is the planet still growing? Is it still actively sucking up gas and dust from the disk surrounding it? Webb's future observations might be able to detect the faint heat signature of this accretion process. If it is, we would be witnessing planetary formation in real time, a process we have only ever been able to simulate on supercomputers. And then the theories get even weirder. What if it was kicked out from an orbit closer to its star? That would imply the existence of another massive, unseen body in the system that acted as the gravitational bully. Is there a Planet 9 equivalent hiding in the TWA-7 system. Our most planetary systems locked in a constant, violent dance of migration and ejection. This one discovery forces us to confront the possibility that stable, orderly solar systems like our own might be the exception, not the rule. This is the real source of the NASA panic. It's not a panic of fear, but a panic of pure, unadulterated shock and awe. It's the panic a historian feels when they find a text that rewrites everything they know about an ancient civilization. The models are broken, the textbooks need to be updated. The universe, it turns out, is far more creative and chaotic in building its worlds than our limited imaginations had allowed. We thought we were beginning to understand the rules of planet formation, but the discovery of TWA-7b is like watching a player on the field suddenly pick up the ball and run with it in a game we thought was soccer. We don't even know the rules anymore. The hunt has changed. Nobody saw this coming. For years, scientists searched for planets around other stars using shadows. They watched stars and waited for tiny dips in their light, hoping it meant a planet was passing in front. This method helped us find almost 6,000 planets, but now something new has happened and it changes everything. In an observatory perched atop a dormant volcano in Hawaii, astronomers did something incredible. For decades, they had only inferred the existence of alien planets, guessing they were there from flickers in starlight. But on one fateful night, they took a picture. This may sound simple, but it's like trying to spot a firefly right next to a huge spotlight from millions of kilometers away. The star's light is so bright, it hides any planet near it, but these ground-based telescopes, Keck and Gemini, had a secret weapon, adaptive optics. This technology is like a smart mirror that cancels out the blurring effect of Earth's atmosphere, making the view incredibly sharp. When scientists used it on a young star called HR 8799, 129 light years away, they saw not one, but four faint points of light moving together through the darkness. It was a family of planets a real, visible, alien solar system. And it's not just any system, it's a family of giants, orbiting a star that's only 30 million years old. That's a teenager in cosmic time, compared to our 4.6 billion-year-old sun.
The planets themselves are monsters. Each one is a super Jupiter, weighing in at five to 10 times the mass of our solar system's largest world. They are so young and massive that they glow with the intense heat of their own formation, shining brightly in infrared light. But what makes this system so strange isn't just the size of its worlds, it's where they are. The four giant planets of HR 8799 orbit their star at enormous distances, from 15 to 70 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The farthest one is twice as far from its star as Neptune is from ours. According to the leading theory of planet formation, these behemoths shouldn't even be able to form there. The area is too empty and the material too sparse. It's like finding four skyscrapers built side by side in the middle of Antarctica. So how did they get there? One idea is that the planets formed through a violent and chaotic process where huge chunks of the gas disk around the star suddenly collapsed under their own weight. Another idea is that they were born closer in and then kicked outwards by gravitational battles between them. The truth? Scientists are still debating and this system is the central piece of evidence in that thrilling cosmic mystery. But there's more. The images didn't just show the planets, they also revealed a massive dusty disk surrounding the entire system. And the four giant planets are like cosmic sculptors, their immense gravity carving out the shape of this disk, clearing paths and shaping its edges. We are not just looking at a static picture, we are seeing the architectural blueprint of a young solar system. Before HR 8799, the idea of photographing another solar system was pure science fiction. There were other landmark discoveries around the same time, like the single giant planet seen orbiting the star Beta Pictoris. It was exciting, but HR 8799 gave us a whole family portrait at once, proving that the layout of our own solar system, with small rocky worlds close in and gas giants far out, was not the only way to build one. It showed us that systems of super Jupiters in the icy voids were possible. This moment was a turning point, a testament to human ingenuity. While space telescopes like Hubble struggled to spot planets against the glare, astronomers on the ground had engineered a way to see through our own atmosphere with stunning clarity. The discovery of the HR 8799 family was a wake-up call. It forced us to rethink everything we believed about the limits of planet formation and the diversity of worlds beyond our own. With HR 8799, we didn't just take a picture of a planet, we saw an entire alien solar system in motion, a family of giants dancing in the dark. This discovery was a profound leap, a new window into the cosmos. It was the first chapter in the story of directly imaging other worlds a story that would one day lead to even more advanced tools like the James Webb Space Telescope. The hunt for new worlds changed forever on that day. And for the first time, we were watching. A baby gas giant born in a swirl of stardust has just become the most important alien planet in history. It's a ghost from the past, a blueprint for creation and a direct challenge to science. So here's the real question. If this is what Webb found in its first attempt, what else is hiding out there in the dark? Are we truly prepared for the answers? Hit subscribe, because the universe just got a whole lot bigger and a whole lot stranger.